Welcome inside the Manatee Convention Center on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. I'm Chris Mannix, joined by the former junior middleweight champion, Sergio Moore. And Sergio, just across the street on Saturday, we are going to get a fight that I think can't miss. Super El Matias, Liam Paro. I don't think the judges are going to be needed for this one. How good is this going to be? Well, it's going to be a coming out party for Subriel Matias. 20 wins, 20 knockouts. And like I said, a boogeyman in a loaded division and 140 pounds. Liam Paro, though, in Montana Love, a fight that we didn't think would would pan out the way it did, but Liam Paro travels well. He's one of these Aussies that knows how to control power. He's going to have to do it against Subriel Matias. He's going to have to stay in front of him. That power is real. Coming out party for Matias or for Paro, we're going to find out. So you called Subriel Matias a boogeyman on social media this week. You took some criticism for it because there are a lot of boogeymen in boxing. But Subriel Matias, 20 wins, all 20 by knockout. One loss on his resume, but he avenged that loss a few fights later with a knockout. Why do you believe he belongs among the top five boogeymen? I think he belongs in top three boogeymen because Subriel Matias is, is not being called out by the champions. He holds a world title. He owns IBF world championship and other champions don't mention his name they're talking about teofimo lopez they talk about old champions like josh taylor they don't mention matias that's one of the part part of the reasons and if you weigh a calculated risk versus the reward the risk outweighs that reward even if it's for a world championship fight so look the power's real the fact that he makes opponents find a way out finds a he submits them i mean the last five opponents they've been undefeated none of these guys continue whether the doctor stopped it the corner stopped it their team stopped it Someone stops it. This guy's a real deal. All right, Liam Parra coming into this fight with an undefeated record. And coming off two very good wins. First round knockout over Brock Jarvis. That was back in Australia. Then he comes stateside, and he has a huge win over Montana Love. Dropping Montana Love three times before getting the knockout. What have you seen from Liam Parra that makes you believe he's got a chance to win this one? Look, he's, uh, he's an aggressive southpaw that knows how to use his feet. So he has good enough power to get your respect, but he's good on his feet and knows how to use the entire ring. So he's made for the distance, but if he catches you clean, he can't hurt you. Liam Parra is a, is a live dog in this fight. I mean, if he, I want to see how Matias is going to react once he gets clipped. That's going to be also uh, something to factor in as well. Hey champ, I know why you're here. You're a born winner, the top dog. You have a proper punch on you. It only takes one, eh? But I know you're not all about throwing haymakers. You know your bobs from your weaves. And you know the zone's got over 100 live events every year. Over 100. Proper stack. All the action, the chaos, the comebacks, the non-stop knockout. Big fights every week. So get those gloves back on. Together, we're boxing royalty. The zone. Undisputed. As we talk about this in main event, a tremendous fight. Subriel Matias, who many believe, we included, could be the best 140-pounder in the world. No one really wanted to accept the challenge. The man to my left, Liam Paro, accepted that challenge and did it aggressively, did it quickly. He believes that he can become Australia's latest world champion on Saturday night. We're going to turn to Team Paro. Alfie De Carlo, welcome. Um, aware of the challenge, but excited, confident, and you believe your man can make history here in Puerto Rico on Saturday night. Yeah, thanks, Eddie. Um, yeah, look, we've had a, a wonderful preparation for this fight. Um, done a solid camp in Australia as well as finishing off here in my uh, Fort Lauderdale and Miami for six weeks. Look, Liam, I don't have to ask him too many questions. I knew he'd accept the fight. He's a, he's a fighter. He's got the heart of a lion. And I know that come fight night, he's going to give it his all. Um, we're very confident. The preparation's been amazing. And I know what Liam can do. We have full respect to Subriel Matias. He's an unbelievable champion and, and to Team Matias. But I just think that Liam's going to have the goods on the night. Obviously, he's been around now. He's, he's experienced many big nights, of course, headlined back home in Brisbane. But more importantly, you know, co-main event, a, a sold-out Chase Arena, 15,000 people in San Francisco when he beat Montana Love. Got all the experience to stay calm under the pressure on Saturday. Yeah, I don't think the occasion is going to get to Liam. Like you said, he's fought in front of 19, 20,000 people uh, in December. Also had the, all the, you know, pressure that comes with fighting in your home country against Brock Jarvis there in a big event. So I know Liam's going to be ready. He'll walk out and uh, he'll get the job done. Well, I'll pass over to Liam. Liam, the challenger on Saturday night. There's a calmness about you. Not many people want to face this guy. You know how good he is, but you also believe you have the beating of him on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, fighters, we're fighters, we fight. I'm going to stick by that. Uh, first, I want to thank you and Matrim for giving me this opportunity. And um, I want to say mucho respeto a Matias, respeto Puerto Rico, 
Vengo a darle una buena pelea a su campeón. Very good, Lee. That's very impressive. You put me to shame. Put me to shame. There, there has been some back and forth, you know. I know you respect each other as well, but the chat's good as well. You respect this guy as a fighter, but you believe you've got the tools and the game plan under Alfie to beat him. One million percent. You know, look, he's a tremendous champion. His record speaks for itself. Um, it's a world title at the end of the day. It's what you dream about as a young kid. And um, look, nothing in life comes easy. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking the biggest test, not only for the title, but for the best guy in the division at the moment. So it's a no-brainer for me. Like I said, fighters fight, and I'll fight anyone, and I'm proving that. I'm coming to into the line then to Puerto Rico to take in on the champion. So I'm ready. Obviously, Australian boxing absolutely flying at the moment. Um, and more importantly, a great time. Every, every, a time zone that everyone's used to, to watch the big fights, of course, Sunday, mid-morning, coming into the afternoon, going to be a big audience live on the zone in Australia, ready to become Australia's latest world champion. Oh, 100%, that's what we do it for. You know, we're proud Aussies. And, um, yeah, shout out to everyone tuning in back home. You know, God willing, we get the job done Saturday. Thank you, Liam. As we pass down to Team Matthias, we'll start with the trainer, Jacob Najjar. Nate, Jacob, welcome. Um, this is a great fight. Everybody knows the ability of Liam Paro. You believe in your man. The atmosphere is going to be incredible. Ready for a, a big performance from your champion on Saturday. Absolutely. We know that this is a, a good fight, a dangerous fight for, for Subriel, just as well as a dangerous fight for Liam Paro. Uh, what more exciting to be here in Puerto Rico in front of Subriel Matias, his fans, his, home, his hometown, you know, with all his people being here, his children, his wife, everyone being here. But I believe 100% in my heart, and I know what we did in camp. I know we, we've done everything correctly. There's no excuses. And I know that Subriel Matias Saturday night will become victorious and will remain, his bout will remain here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. How does the, the game plan change being at home? You know, it's a different kind of pressure. We know that Subriel has had to go on the road many times in his career. Now, in front of his adoring fans, his people, obviously that's going to lift his performance as well, but important to stay calm as well on Saturday. Absolutely. And, you know, you have to work the mindset of, of a fighter to allow him to know that he is the one that's on top of the ring, that he's inside that ring. You know, we want to all please the fans, but at the end of the day, he's, he's the one in there fighting. So we have to remain him calm. We have to let him know in camp, you know, we, we're, we're not going to be pressured by the cheers or the claps or the yells. So he's, he's a professional. He's a veteran with 21 fights. He knows what he needs to do, and he's fought here before. You know, this is his 10th fight here in Puerto Rico. And we don't expect anything different, but, you know, the same Subriel that comes out, the warrior, the, the attacker, the animal in the ring. Thank you, Jacob. Subriel, welcome, champion. Um, this is it, your moment. I know, as Jacob says, you've boxed here before, but this is different. As world champion, 10,000 people, a great fight. You ready to perform for your people on Saturday night? Eh, primero que nada, gracias a Dios. So first and foremost, I want to thank God. I almost, I also want to thank my team, my manager, the promoter Eddie Hearn, for you know accepting to, to do business with me. You know, I'm delighted to be here because the last time I fought here was in 2019 on the 13th, 30th of June. That time I wasn't champion, but this time I am champion, so it's going to be very interesting. You say that you've been like a caged animal in training camp. Of course, we know you're a dangerous fighter. This guy as well, a very good fighter. You expect a tough challenge on Saturday. I want to say something, uh, Liam Paro. Uh, I'm really uh, very happy because he accepted the challenge to fight me in my house, my town. You no, know? and. I think uh, in the paper, the people say I'm envoyed. And he accept the challenge, you know? And I'm, yeah, I'm happy for this, because uh, Saturday night, two warriors gonna be uh, put the show in, in Puerto Rico. <laughs> And finally, away from the nice Subriel Matias, every one of your fights has ended inside the distance. Every one of your victories ended inside the distance. You believe Saturday night you stop this man, 
and you remain the most dangerous man in the division. Eh, realmente siento que la pelea no llega a 12 asaltos. So first I want to say I don't feel that this fight will go 12 rounds. He should, well, everything he's showing me is that this won't go 12 rounds. You know, he might come to box, you know, he obviously wants to take that title away from me, you know, and I want to take his undefeated record away from him. Yo no quiero dejarme lo quitar y entiendo que él de igual manera su invicto y que siento que no va a llegar a 12 asaltos. Huge event in Puerto Rico take over the 140 pound division. This is a guy that has unbelievable power. Ice running through his veins. This kid is very special. Pound for pound, one of the most exciting fighters on the planet. It's gonna be war, it's gonna be violence. This is the homecoming of Puerto Rico's new boxing superstar. Eddie, we were talking about how this fight might play out. And I think the biggest factor is can Liam Paro survive 12 rounds? Because we've seen guys like Ponce, like Ergachev, kind of unload the clip against, uh, against Matias early on, but then he just wears you down. Like, is that the biggest factor in this fight? You have to, you know, you have to be able to really absorb punishment against your real Matias. I mean, you're not going to go in there and out fight. So you've got to be smart. You've got to be... You know, good with your feet, and Liam's all of those things. But it really comes down to the punishment that you can absorb. Mm -hmm. Because if you go 12 rounds with this guy, you're not getting out, you know, unscathed. This guy is scary, he's dangerous, he hits extremely hard, his work rate is incredible, he backs you up, he'll put you under pressure. It will be like a furnace of noise in there on Saturday night. It's going to be wild, 10,000 fans. And Liam is a real calm guy. Like, I like I like Liam's mentality. I like his ability. I like his style. But he's never been under pressure like this from a puncher with the volume of Subriel Matisse. And, and that's really going to be... This fight is as much about Liam Paro as it is about Subriel Matisse. Eddie, know what Subriel does. Eddie, the longer you're staying in this game, the more you're thinking like a fighter. You just pretty much said exactly what the game plan is for him to win. That's exactly what he needs to do. But how is he going to take that punch from Matisse? He will get hit. Yeah. But can he roll with the punch? Can he take the steam off that power? That's how. That's what I want to see, how he's going to react. Liam Paro is a southpaw. He's going to use those southpaw angles. If he can back up Matias, get the, the monster, get on his back foot, then you know Paro's coming in with a game plan and a strategy, and he has a fight IQ to execute that. The quieter the 10,000 Puerto Ricans are, the better Liam Paro is doing. So the quieter it is, the better it is for uh, Paro. Also, in these kind of fights, the start is so important. Mm -hmm. Like, you see a lot of guys who start... You know, against a puncher and against someone who's aggressive that really take a lot of punishment in those opening three or four rounds, you don't want to be doing that. If you start getting marked up, hurt to the body, go back to your stool after two, three, four rounds, it's too long a night. Somehow Liam's got to find a way to, to not go six nil down, but also to sort of hit the back stretch unscathed with the energy, you know, with, with the, the still the body armor in place to actually take it to Matias. But, you know, that's why I asked the question up there about the pressure on Subriel Matisse. You know, he's been an away fighter a lot of his time. He hasn't had this kind of attention before. When he walked, it, it might turn him into a more dangerous animal. Right. Or sometimes when you're fighting in your hometown, there's more pressures. And, and, you know, more people around you trying to ask for tickets, trying to, you know, they're bugging you in the morning. Where's the after party? All this kind of stuff. <laughs> so he looks like a focused guy to me. But don't rule out Liam Paro. He's a smart guy who can really fight. And I like this matchup. What have you learned about the confidence of Matias since we're promoting him for the last few months? Because he's admitted he doesn't have the prettiest technique. He doesn't have the greatest footwork. But he's as confident as it gets that guys cannot finish fights with him. Yeah, I, I, you know, every one of his victories has come inside the distance, first. He's a guy that has, you know, he's never been spoon-fed anything. He will jump in with any 140 pounder in the world. But like he's not difficult to do a deal with. We just need to raise his profile to the point where fight fans are calling for him against Teofimo Lopez. You know, you've got a situation at the moment, Teofimo Lopez is fighting Steve Claggett. Let's be real, that's a waste of everybody's time, mm -hmm. right? Lopez is an incredible fighter. Teofimo against Subriel Matias in a unification is one of the best matchups in boxing. But you've got to have the guys 
who see the value in fighting Super Real Matisse. So if you're a superstar like Tio, you're going to want a fortune to get in a ring with Super Real Matisse. You'd hope it would be the lure of unifying the division, but the game doesn't always work like that. So you need contenders that are willing to roll the dice. And fair play to Liam Barra. I'm telling you now, we went through a list of opponents for Matisse. No one wanted him, especially in Puerto Rico. Well, it's one thing fighting Super Real Matisse in your own hometown. Right. Fighting him in his hometown. I mean, it's, it's almost mission impossible, but, but Liam will give it a great go, and he's very competent. But beyond that, it's about making the fights big enough. What we need, for, what Matthias needs on Saturday night, is an unbelievable performance where the whole boxing community and casual fight fans are going, stick him in with Haney, stick him in with Tiafimo, stick him in with Ryan Garcia, stick him in with Tank, whoever. He'll, there's no problem on his side. You ain't got to worry about Matias. He's a scary guy. Well, you're giving the Puerto Rican fans coming to this fight a lot to look forward to because there's a lot of Puerto Ricans on this card on Saturday night. As we look at the fight card right now. William Ortiz against Carlos Mitzayo. Stephanie Pinheiro, 147-pound title fight against Diana Tapia. Then you got Yankee Rivera, yeah. terrific prospect at 112 pounds. He takes on Victor Sandoval. Angel Fierro moving up to 140. He will take on Alfred Santiago. Fredo Santiago, I'm sorry. And then Matias against Paro. As you look at that undercard, which of those fights excites you? Which of those fights do you think is most important? The opening one, you know, William Ortiz mm -hmm. against Mitsuo. You've got two Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're in a head to head up there. Yeah. They look like, it's massive for them. You know, Stephanie Pinheiro looks like a real good prospect, 147 pounds, could go on and fight Sandy Ryan as well. For me, the one I'm really looking forward to is Rivera against Sandoval. These little guys give us absolute wars. You've got three Mexico against Puerto Rico matchups on that undercard as well. And last time out, Rivera was, was in a brilliant fight, dominated his opponent, then got hurt in, what was it, the eighth or ninth round, mm -hmm. ended up having a war. He seems to be a popular guy. Olympian, you know, strong amateur pedigree, still only five fights in. I think if he wins on Saturday, he's ready for a world championship of lower. All right, so if Sergio finds a washed-up Puerto Rican at the bar tonight, can you put him on the card? Oh, I'm in. Versus Puerto Rico. Very washed-up. Very, very washed. Yeah. Very washed-up. Well, a lot of good talent <laughs> here on this fight card on Saturday. Matias against Paro, live on DAZN. Day one. Get tickets now.